production. There used to be this advertisement that was like popular in the Northwest for Rainier beer. They go Rainier beer. Does that ring a bell? No. Okay. But I want some now, so okay. advertising works. Okay. Because I was thinking chain guard. <laughs> nice. That's just the, I'm a fan. That, that's what I thought of. <laughs> so we're gonna look at uh, a demo from Chain Guard, and you're Eddie Zaneski. I am. Hello. Hello, Eddie. And you're a software engineer. I am. So what are we going to look at? So today I'm going to show you ChainGuard Enforce, which is our continuously verifying policy enforcement engine for all things containers and supply chain security. OK, great. Let's take a look. Yeah. So what are we looking at right now? So we're looking at the Enforce dashboard. And we can see that I have a single cluster that's already set up, uh, installed into Enforce. So who's this for? Who would be looking at this? Yeah, so this is for anyone who is concerned about security of their containers, right? So security engineers, application engineers, uh, platform engineers. Okay, so kind of people in different roles, but they want to be able to get a kind of get a glimpse. What exactly are we looking at? Like, so if I'm an engineer, I'm looking at this. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the policy compliance. I'm looking at what else am I looking at here? Yeah, so this is our overview dashboard. Okay. Right? So this is like quickly at a glance. I yeah. can see I have a single staging cluster installed. Uh, I can see kind of a breakdown of the different packages that are running. Okay. Uh, and I can see that some of my images, 11 out of 32 are compliant, and I have a bit, a bit failing right now. Ah, uh, okay. And these are policies that you can either pull from a catalog or you can craft yourself okay. uh, to enforce all sorts of different things. Okay. So we have two failed policies. We have a policy compliance of 34%. Yeah. What does that tell them? That tells them that they got a bit of work ahead of them. Yeah, I would think so. Right, so I can show you, we can take a look at this single cluster here. Uh, and here I can see those policies and what they're matching and what's failing. So these are all the containers that are actually running inside my cluster. Uh, and the really cool thing, my favorite part about Enforce is we can see the breakdown of all the packages of all these different workloads. Why is that your favorite? Because the hardest part about dealing with something for like log for shell was figuring out what workloads you had were vulnerable. Okay. Uh, and we give you that view with a, a searchable interface that you can go from taking weeks to figure out to however long it takes you to type in a word. Was that a pretty important uh, development for you all to have this aspect to it? Yeah. I mean, that must have been. We built the tool that we wanted to use uh -huh. as engineers ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, because what were the what were the tools like beforehand? What were you trying What were you trying to do? Yeah, the tools it was really all by didn't hand. exist. It was all by hand. Yeah, when Cisco was talking to Congress about dealing with log for shell in the first yeah. place, they they talked about how it took them X amount of time. I think it was like two weeks to come up with a plan to figure out what they had that was vulnerable. Oh and wow, that's a long time. That's just to figure out a plan to figure out what yeah, was vulnerable. Yeah, right, gosh. Because they, they're, they're shipping so many different products, so many different right. routers, so many different firmwares. Yeah. Too. Um, and so that's kind of my favorite part about this is we hopefully cut that down from two weeks to a few seconds here. Okay, that's so, interesting. So I can show you here. So uh, the packages, I can see that I have uh, some Maven packages running. You can see that Log4j is actually registered there. Uh, I can see some Alpine packages. So this is like the um, uh, OpenSSL version for Alpine. So I can see the version, and then I can actually drill down and find out what workloads that's running with. So one of the, the things they had at Google was a term called Build Horizon. Okay. And it was uh, kind of like an encapsulation of a bunch of different security for your, your production workloads. But uh, the one that we're focused on here was uh, the artifact age. So how long this artifact has been since it's been built. And so you can actually have an enforcement policy here that says anything that's older than 30 days, I want to flag and fail because maybe you should do a full rebuild to get some OS updates or something. Uh, and so that's just this policy here. I can see that quite a few of the images are failing because uh, they just haven't been rebuilt in 30 days. Um, the other thing I want to show you is we've heard from a lot of our, our customers that you know, they have a, a team that might be spinning up a new cluster that's not already enrolled in, in Force. And um, kind of like they, they want to keep tabs on new clusters as they're created. And so we actually have a, a new feature that we're rolling out called Discovery. And so I can do a uh, chain CTL clusters discovery and give it a provider flag of GKE and Cloud Run. So it's not just Kubernetes, it's actually uh, workloads that are running in AWS Cloud, and ECS, and EKS, GCP, uh, a bunch of other places. 
And so this is going to slurp in my uh, Google Cloud credentials. and So that's what we're looking at, the credentials. Yeah, well, yeah. I have a trust relationship set up. So I can see that it found uh, two other clusters that are eligible in my GCP account. So this is my production uh, cluster, and then this is actually my Cloud Run environment. OK. And so I can tell it to go in and enroll those. And we'll see back on the dashboard here uh, that we're going to have two new clusters show up. So you can continuously run this as your engineers and your, your platform teams are creating new clusters, and maybe they're testing things out. Uh, they just have to be enrolled. Exactly. And they don't have to enroll it themselves, which is the magic part. Uh, okay. We're removing the burden from them having to sign up and add an agent or something to their cluster. I imagine that's something that is helpful to have automated, because otherwise, you're just waiting kind of for that. Yeah, to happen. I would certainly be running it on a, a continuous job. Yeah, uh, and you can see that there, it's going to ingest all those new clusters and all those new images. It's going to recalculate some of the failing stuff. Uh, we can see that the new production cluster has some other packages running. Uh, so I have a bunch of Go applications. Uh, there should also be some um, Node.js ones in here, so we can detect any type of workload. Uh, and pull out their SBOM and show you across all of your different languages that your teams are using, so you're not just restricted to one language. Uh, here's the NPM packages, right? So I can see all my NPM packages and their versions. Uh, another cool view is looking at the workloads. So I can break this down and see that I have uh, Tekton running, and Tekton has a couple different uh, packages that are running as well. Uh, and then another policy that I have is Tekton must be signed, right? So uh, we integrate heavily with SIGSTOR, uh, and we can enforce that uh, we want certain identities to be signing the images that are running in your cluster. So it's actually, I can tell that some of these images from Tekton aren't actually signed, and we can flag on that. So now we're looking at it, and I saw the violations are 14, and the cluster is one. Yep. The violations would be, how are you defining violations? So violations are going to be the, uh, the images that are failing this particular policy. Okay. And this policy says, hey, I want these. Uh, this is actually a, a public key that we're checking for, but it could be any sort of signing authority or identity. OK. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was we have uh, a concept of enforcement. Okay. And so let's say that we have this policy created for to prevent log for shell, right? So we don't want log for shell introduced to our environment again. We spent so long trying to uh, clean it up and make sure everything was up to date that we don't want developers to deploy a vulnerable version. And so that's what this policy shows here. Uh, it's got the vulnerable versions listed here. It's kind of a big list. Uh, but what this is going to do is it's going to check inside of that metadata that ships with all those containers that are built, and it's going to find which ones are vulnerable. And so I've actually gone and I've enabled enforcement on a particular namespace. We've designed Enforce to be gradually rolled out, so you don't have to start by blocking everything. You can start with like an observe phase where you could see what's going on and slowly opt into enforcement on different workloads. So let's say that I'm an application developer and I'm going to deploy a vulnerable version of Log4j that uh, I don't know is maybe in this image. So I've got a demo image here that has that vulnerable version. And this cluster, this namespace is opted in for enforcement. And if we see that I run this, uh, it's going to evaluate that image, pull that metadata, see that it was actually built with a vulnerable version, and it's going to deny it. Okay. So right there, I can prevent any sort of vulnerability that I know about, that I have a policy for, for being reintroduced back into the cluster. Uh, and so we have this policy catalog. I'm not sure if I mentioned it. But we have some of those pre-created policies in that log4j image, uh, the log4shell uh, policy is one. But we've tried to make this really easy for users to get up to speed and start with sort of like a, a springboard to draft their own policies. So that's that's uh, Chain Garden Force in a nutshell. Well, thanks so much, Eddie. I appreciate the demo. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.